Hi there, it's Tanya from Tati Treasures and um, welcome to Lazy Sunday and we're going to flick through this one today. I know we have looked at it before in one of the haul videos but um, I wanted to just go through all of the books that, that I own uh, because then when anyone's thinking about buying a book and that and they search for it they can uh, see see what the books books like because um you know myself um i buy all my books from amazon um never find any from charity shops and things like that and obviously we're not going out and about now anyway um and sometimes you know i've bought books that are absolutely no use to me at all because you just don't know what the book's like and, until you get it. So, this is The Painted Garden, A Year in Words and Watercolours by Mary Woodken. Now, this is a lovely size. It's, I'm guessing, 8 by, yeah, 8 by, like, 7 and a half-ish. So, it's absolutely stunning. Travel up the garden path with Mary Wood, Wood, Woodin, a celebrated artist, and she's got a green thumb. And she shares her experiences of one year in her enchanted English garden. A beautifully illustrated journal and sketchbook it includes records of planting, harvesting and blooming throughout four seasons, plus accounts of frequent visits from birds, butterflies and other earthly creatures. <laughs> Mary Woodken also includes a host of useful information for any gardener or homemaker, a homespun recipe for, wa for waterproofing boots, and advice on distinguishing a robin's egg from a bullfinch's. You will discover the meanings of different plants, a variety of herbs and uses, and heart-shaped flowers to use in arrangements for your loved ones. Also peppered throughout are quotations and guidance from well-known gardening authorities. And it was saying that she trained as a textile designer at Manchester Metropolitan University in England and later as a ceramic designer at the Royal College of Art. Wow. Mary Wood Kenner has worked in all areas of surface pattern design. Her major commissions include designs for the London Underground, South Kensington Station. Her interest in gardening began when she married and moved to Blackheath, a leafy suburb in London. She now divides her time between gardening, commercial illustration, painting flowers and looking after two small children. Oh, how wonderful. That's beautiful. So, nice start in page. Oh, look at those. Oh, I'm guessing we're all gushing over the irises, but the pansies are beautiful too. Yeah, she, her paintings are absolutely stunning. Um, and yeah, I'm guessing that's her husband and her, and her children. So this was in 2000. So yeah, for using for junk journals, um, there's lots of things to, to fussy cut out. Um, and that's just on the content. And then these are perfect. You could use the whole the whole page. This is beautiful. Probably use it as a as a cover. It is very white. I don't know how I feel about tea staining it, but I don't know how I feel about using it white as well. Um don't even know if I'm gonna use it because yeah we'll see but yeah it might be something that i fussy fussy cut out but then i mean this is lovely but yeah it's very very white look at this oh beautiful yeah i love the way she paints i 
gardener's work is, is never done. <laughs> oh, those beautiful feathers. See, if it was on that kind of background. So, yeah, beautiful writing in it. This is probably going to be, well, hopefully, something that people are still looking at in a hundred years' time. So it's stunning. Yeah, very, very talented. I think it should be well worth looking looking up on, on the internet. I think it did say that she got a web page and things. These would be lovely to, to fussy cut out. Can't remember how much this was. I feel like it was about eight pounds with postage. Um, I feel it was a little bit more expensive, you know, but I would say this book's virtually new. I don't think there's anything wrong with it at all. That's beautiful. It's all beautiful, isn't it? I'm not gonna keep saying it's beautiful, but it, everything is beautiful <laughs> oh yeah so yeah oh wow such detail they look such like a pink frothiness don't they and she's really captured that that frothiness of of blossom that's what i love about blossom Can any of you paint? I'm gonna, well, I know there's a few people who watch who, who can uh, paint. Hello, Fiona, if you're watching. Uh, Fiona is an absolutely fabulous painter. These are all blossoms. That's beautiful. Not like all vegetables. So that's a good, it's like an identification for... Um, like the leaves and stuff. <laughs> I like that with the eggs, and that's lovely. No, it's so beautiful. <laughs> Stunning. Look at these purples. Wow. Yeah, it, I mean, it would be so, so hard, wouldn't it, to, to cut that up. I mean, I could see it in, in a journal as a page that, so, you know, you've got it just to, to look at. I think that would probably be the way that I did use this book. Um, like I say, some of the pages I would feel fine to, to fussy cut. Um, again, that would make a... A lovely uh, page and then obviously to me I mean yeah that is beautiful but um yeah you could oh I don't know I, I, I don't think I'd want to cover any of it up but it's quite fine to have pieces in in a journal what aren't for writing what is maybe just to give you some inspiration or just to to make you smile June's very nice isn't it Oh. Strawberries, how much making here? Oh, flavoured vinegars, thyme, raspberry, bay, and red currant. They're beautiful. What's that beautiful? Sorry, cornflower. colouring and that is is super it's really spot on <laughs> could do the english uh, cottage with this gail um gail did suggest me doing like an english cottage um kind of journal so yeah Alright, that would be fabulous. It's a, it's a flip out. But yeah, it's hard because I was thinking if you've got a nice picture on one side, then obviously you could cover the whole back and stuff. But it, 
no pages that you wouldn't want to use mm. yeah i might save some of these actually and and think about a country garden because um yeah it, it'd obviously take a while to save things up and and that but um yeah it might be worth putting putting some things aside that a fig doesn't say I think it is I'm sure it is I love figs I really love figs and it's funny mm -hmm. I love dried figs and I bought um, a fresh one once and I really didn't like it um, but yeah I love figs and prunes <laughs> I remember my granny eating them and he, they were like these, they look like squash beetles or something, don't they? And you were like, oh. Um, yeah, and then, I don't know why I've got a paper clip in here. Oh, that's bizarre. Um, yeah, and I used to think they was, they was awful, but um, yeah, I absolutely loved them. And now we're getting on to autumn. See, I could have used those this year, but I didn't feel ready to. I'm not really a hoarder, but um, some things I, I, I don't like. I want to use them for the right things, not just for the, the sake of using it. But I like that. The garden is never dead. Growth is always going on. And growth that can be seen and seen with delight. Nice quote. Yeah, I've got to say, I, I really must try me under painting. I, I think I'm going to fail miserably because um, I could never <coughs> draw. Um, I can see things in my head and, and stuff, but it just doesn't come out of my hand but I could never like do the things that I do now so who knows I might have developed skills without, without even knowing I suppose until I pick up um, a paintbrush or a watercolour pencil I'm not gonna know about <laughs> that be a nice Christmas card make things like that not like that well i've got things like that on the christmas tree but it actually reminded me of um when i made um, some popcorn and um put it on on a line and um we had a well it was the acer actually before we moved it at the top of the garden around the pond um and in the winter we hung all um these popcorn decorations on and that for, for the birds and we'd made them some of the the lard um things with with nuts in and things um i did i bought a book about um feeding feeding the birds in in your garden because alna was re really into nature and she was she was little i think all children are aren't they um, um, I bought uh, lots of books and things and we used to go on lots of walks and collect things and find out about things and she had, it was something, I don't know if it was called a discovery handbook or something and um, it was a spiral bound uh, book and it was like a, a checklist of, of things what you saw and it was a full um spread so they'd be you know say like a certain tree it would tell you about it and then there would be spots for you to write and a photograph um i have still got that somewhere i'll have to get it out um and yeah we, we used to go around taking photographs and that of different trees and mushrooms and things and then uh she'd she'd write about it um yeah Oh, that was lovely, that was. Yeah. Oh, right. That's that's me today. I think you will all agree this is a fabulous book. Um, I think it would be well worth anybody who's got 
a nice conservatory or something this would be beautiful wouldn't it on on the table um in fact i wonder if my mother would like this you know not this copy <laughs> i'm buying a new copy but uh but yeah wonderful gift for somebody who, who is a gardener and and things so that's me for now thanks a lot for joining me i hope you've had a happy sunday and keep well and keep busy and keep your chin up see you soon bye for now bye